anyone know that's ever been choke slammed for doing the robot? You guys ever see that? That was crazy. I don't think that was possible. He now hosts the show called Adam vs. the Man, which is more than just a show, it's a brand. Some of you are wearing his clothes, some of you are wearing you know, his shirts, some of you are actually wearing his, his actual clothes too. Adam loves to kick the dragon right in the face, and he's the, uh, he's, look, he's a little cocky, but you know what, so am I. So, and I think that's all right. I love him to death. Mr. Adam Kokesh, please give it up. Where are you? Are you in here? Fuck, I give these great introductions and I build you guys up. This is how cocky he is. He's doing like this grandiose introduction where he's like actually live streaming himself walk in like he's Chris Rock. Seriously, where are you at? I'm that's what's supposed to happen. It didn't. Got over here. Alright, let's see, let's like. He's at the diner, he's getting high with the, at the diner. Yo, what's up? Kokesh, yeah. He's supposed to be walking in like this whole grandiose thing. Oh, he's cocky. <laughs> you do a cheer for him, a chant for the fucking Is he in the diner? Adam! Adam Kokesh, where the hell are you? Roger, that's his time. Here he comes! Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Adam Kokesh! <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Mike. I'm sure you've been doing a wonderful job. Hello, Anarchy in the NYC! Yeah! Happy 420. You thought I was going to forget, didn't you? What was, I, you know, I want to give a shout out to the organizers for starting this off. Ian Chiaf. Let's hear it for Ian, ladies and gentlemen. Now, you might be sitting here having a good time tonight and not fully appreciate the significance of this event and what Ian has done leading up to this. Liberty Fest 1, Liberty Fest 2, Liberty Fest 3, the whole franchise that came out of that. And the one that sells out is the one when he finally puts anarchy in the name. How many of you have been just waiting for this event, waiting for the Liberty Movement to come out and say, yeah, yeah, it's about anarchy. <laughs> Have we not come a long way? Yeah. Holy crap, look at this movement! And I mean I mean the bigger movement, the, the, the freedom movement. I mean, let's let's be nice and include all of the conservatives that are apologizing for not being libertarian yet. Boo! Jack Hunter! <laughs> Or am I going to keep hearing names, like from the back for that one? How about all of the libertarian constitutionalists who are apologizing for not yet being anarchists? <laughs> don't, don't you hate it when people who believe in a coercive state call themselves libertarians? It really gives the rest of us a bad name, doesn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Bill Maher! But why are we in New York City? This is the belly of the status beast. This is the least free place on Earth. Wow. It's, like, it's like the opposite of Disneyland. New York City. But I gotta say, how many people in the room actually live in New York City? Woo. Yeah. Woo. Sorry about that. I really shouldn't talk. I live near the one city in America that's worse. Potomac. Or, uh, <laughs> Mordor on the Potomac, Washington, D.C., District of Criminals. But let, let, let's break this down for a second. I, you know, I, I'm sure it's been said tonight, there's been an incredible host of good speakers. Uh, you know, and Ian has done an incredible job putting this together. But, like, just, just the, the idea, you know, anarchy. It doesn't take a Ph.D. to understand it. No ruler. Not no rules, right? No Rulers, and if that's what we're what we're advocating for, as libertarian, voluntarist, anarcho-capitalist, whatever label you think sticks to you, and for those of you who aren't there yet, uh, you might be in the wrong room, but you're still welcome here. Thank you. Um, if you so, if you're not an anarchist yet, and, and you think that at some level you should have a ruler, you're saying that you want someone to be 
in charge of you. I think they have a term for that. Um, they, they use it a lot in prison. What are they? What are they? Oh yeah, you're somebody's bitch. <laughs> you haven't figured this out yet? And now, you know, I, I hate to say this in the wake of the Boston tragedy, when so many people are coming out waving the flag, people die and we have to wave the flag. Patriotism is for bitches. Woo! Yeah! It shouldn't be that hard to come out and say that in 2013. Thank you very much. And the, the thing in, in Boston, it, it burst a lot of people's bubbles, you know? It, it really, like, for all the people that were, were just totally, un, just not paying attention, totally checked out, you know, they've got their heads fully embedded in their fifth point of contact, that for them, it was like, oh my god, I could die at any time! <laughs> and you have to be like, you know, if you think that the Boston Massacre is a big deal, and you never once came out and protested a war, or took a stand against the police state, go fuck yourself, you patriotic, myopic little bitch. Self-centered piece of crap. Willing servant of the elite. Willing subservient to government. And you know what? It's really sad that, that we see it this way. And you know, when I say go fuck yourself to those people, I, I don't mean it in a bad way, really. I'm not make, no, I'm not. Use protection. If you are so emotionally, you know, like, whatever, that you see three people die and you go, the mainstream media told me to cry. I need to wave a flag now. You probably should go masturbate some more. Yeah. <laughs> something wrong with you that needs to be worked out. Start with masturbation, work your way up to therapy. You'll get there. You'll get there. But what is it, you, you see, what, what is this about a, a tragedy like this? You, you have to feel what the mainstream media tells you to feel. You have to feel the way the president does. And Obama says, yes, we will rise and fall as one nation. Well, you fat bastards better stay out of my life the rest of this country. I do not want to rise or fall with Obama and the rest of his minions. <laughs> You're going to rise and fall as one. Well, the more we stay together, the more we try to collectivize this, this country. Did I say we? Damn it. There you go. Plank. Put a Bitcoin in the uh, you know, collectivist language jar. <laughs> Virtual Bitcoin. <laughs> You know, I was uh, driving back from Philly to get here from Smokedown Prohibition 4. Woo! Yeah. And it's really beautiful. If you, if, you, if you stand up in civil disobedience and smoke marijuana in public by yourself, you could get beat up. If you do it with a few hundred people, the cops are afraid of you. <laughs> I'm really lucky most cops are afraid of me already. <laughs> On the way here, we heard like a terrorism alert message. I wrote the number down in case any of you uh, see an unattended backpack in here anywhere. Oh. Oh 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 888-TIPS-NJP. Yes, call the police because people suffer. Therefore, you need the authorities in your life. <laughs> and you know, in this reaction to the Boston Marathon bombing, and I don't mean to belittle the reality of the tragedy that that represents, but to put it in perspective for all of the people that go, oh my god, it's a big deal. 55 people died in bombings in Baghdad that day. That exact day. And you didn't see it on the news because they only wanted to show you white people that were blown up. What did they do to the one Saudi who was the victim of the bombing in Boston? Oh, he's a suspect. He is a person of interest. We're going to go to the hospital and, I don't know what, handcuff him to a hospital bed and then go search his apartment while he's not there? Jesus. Well, what you see, what is revealed to those of you who are able to hear this, most Americans, they hear this and be like, oh my God. They go crying back to their politicians, right? For those of you that are able to appreciate this perspective, what do you see from the Boston bombing? You know what, you, you know what I see? I see a cage around the shrink-wrapped with the 
flag, brain of every American who thinks that patriotism is more important than justice, that being a part of the collective is more important than being an individual, that being subservient to government is more important than liberty. And that is the psychological cage that is revealed, that is what you see when something like this happens. And you know that because you know better, you are disgusted by the national conversation.